The Good News with Simone Hardiman and Kayla Rice. Good morning and welcome to The Good News. I'm Simone Hardiman here with Kayla Rice coming to you from Studio A, a historic St. Paul Amy Church in downtown Raleigh. We are here today to bring you some good news. This is our final week of reports exploring the Lenten season. We will present some very interesting information to help guide you through this last week before Easter and when Jesus ends his journey to the cross. Today, we will present the last name in the series by our Savior and what it means and another idea for youth to also celebrate along with their parents. We will also complete our series on the 14th station of Jesus' journey to the cross in our words of inspiration and encouragement from the clergy as we get ready for the resurrection. Let's get started. Kayla, what is the name you are presenting this week? The name I'm presenting today is Elohim Ahava, which means the God who loves. That name is found in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, and it reads, The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Let me give you that reference again so you can read more about it later is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Thank you, Kayla. Now it's time for our Did You Know segment for today. We have Kyle Polo and Daniel Hager over in Studio B to give us our final Did You Know report. Hello, Kyle and Daniel. I'm here with Daniel Hager to give the last Did You Know report. Tomorrow we will commemorate Holy Thursday, also known as Monday Thursday. Traditionally, at St. Paul, they have a worship service and commemorate the Lord's Supper. They gather to receive communion, to renew their confessions of faith. The worship culminates with the coming to the Lord's table, and groups of twelve will call on the twelve disciples, gathered around the table in the upper room, preparation for the Passover. Soon Jesus would agonize in the garden, and appear in three herons, all set up to get rid of him. But before that, Jesus would pray. In the upper room, Jesus prayed for the disciples gathered with him. But did you know Jesus, the Savior of the world, prayed for you and me? That's right. He prayed for you and me in the book of John chapter 17. You can read Jesus' prayers. The first was that Jesus be glorified so that he could glorify the Father. The second was that Jesus prays for the disciples. And the last was Jesus prays for all who would believe in him. Just as Jesus prayed, we should pray. Talk to God and listen for God to talk to us. Your hand can remind you how to pray. Start with your little finger. Praise Thanksgiving, next, confession, next, intercession, next, petition, thumb, and last, listening. A picture of these elements of prayer and scriptures on, is on St. Paul's website. That's our report for today on Daniel Hager. And I am Kyle Polo reporting for the good news. Back to you, Kayla. Thank you, Kyle. And imagine that, using your hand to remember to pray. Great report, guys. Now it's time for a quick break with a word from our sponsor. Today we will conclude our journey on the Stations of the Cross. This has been a very enlightening series that should have provided a better insight for you of what Jesus endured during those last days. 
It certainly has been enlightening for me and many others. Here to present Stations 13 and 14 is Daniel Taylor. Welcome, Daniel. Hello, Simone and Kayla. I am so glad to be a part of our series on the Stations of the Cross. We conclude our meditations of the Stations with Stations 13 and 14. Station 13, the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. After Jesus yields his spirit, the soldiers pierce his side and take him from the cross. In this station, we witness tender mourning as Jesus' lifeless body lies in his mother's arms. The famous sculptor Michelangelo carved the famous sculpture, the Piata, commemorating this moment. Jesus has truly died, his profound sacrifice complete. We envision our Lord's lifeless body given in obedience and love. The words of Walter Hawkins' song, Marvelous, provide a contemporary reminder of Jesus' gift. You gave that I might live, you gave that I might be set free, exchanged your life for mine. What a marvelous thing Jesus did. Now we come to the 14th station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy man, according to John chapter 19, verse 38, a secret disciple of Jesus, asked Pilate for Jesus' body. He and Nicodemus took Jesus' body after it was taken down, dressed it in linen, and prepared spices. Then they took the body of Jesus to its resting place, a freshly hewn cave. The huge stone over the tomb was to close the door on the life of the man named Jesus. And although we've reached the end of the stations, we have not reached the end of the story. Jesus had to suffer and die to enter into his glory for us, that we might have life. Now, for those who are wondering, there is a 15th station. It is the resurrection. It is our hope that you will remember all that you have seen and heard and cherish the good news of the resurrection. Have a happy Easter. This is Daniel Taylor reporting for the good news. Back to you, Simone. That was such a special series. Thank you, Daniel. Well, that's our good news reports for this edition of the good news. Now it's time for a final word from our clergy with more good news to share from the scriptures. Here with us today is Reverend Barbaretta Miguel, who will give us the word for, for today. Welcome back, Reverend Miguel. Thank you for being with us today. Hello, Simone and Kayla. I'm really glad to be back to give this final look at the scriptures as we approach the resurrection in three days. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Simon Peter denied him. The crowds cried, crucify him. And most of the apostles left him. Pilate washed his hands of Jesus' blood, and the soldiers beat and mocked him. Still in his dying, Jesus looked beyond our faults. He saw all of our needs and cried out, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Jesus died. The earth went dark. The veil in the temple ripped in two tearing away the separation from God caused by humanity's sin. On the cross, we see the actualization of the name of God for today, Elohim Ahava, the God who loves. Jesus' brutal treatment, crucifixion, and death, also known as the passion of Christ, reveals God's passionate love for us. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Jesus humbled himself. He came to serve, not to be served. In life and in death, Jesus showed, for God loved the world so much. Do you get it? God loved us so much. That includes you and me that God gave his one and only son, Jesus, so that whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is the good news. Thank you again for inviting me back to share today. Back to you, Kayla. That is a good news word for today. Thank you, Reverend McGill.
Kayla and I want to thank you, our viewers, for joining us over these past eight weeks to learn more about Lent and sharing in our celebration for the season of Lent. We are sure you learned some new information that helped you through your personal journey. It has been our pleasure to share these broadcasts with you. On behalf of the Education Commission, the Commission on Christian Education, and the lay organization of St. Paul AME Church, we sincerely thank you for viewing our season of Lenten broadcast. Remember, information on our special reports on the St. Paul website. We hope you have a blessed Easter. I am Kayla Rice. And I am Simone Hardiman, signing off for the good news. Have a blessed Easter.